My name is Elamine Abdul Mahmoud. I'm a social media editor of BuzzFeed Canada. I was raised Muslim in Sudan and then Kingston, Ontario. I want to talk to you about this toxic atmosphere of distrust that we find ourselves in. My father is 66. When his bones ache as he's getting off the couch, he says, Allahu Akbar. But that's not the only time he says it. He says Allahu Akbar when he goes to start the car before work. He says it while watching soccer on Sunday mornings when his team scores. And he says it when he has food that's too spicy. I've actually even heard him say it when he gets his tires out of snow after a heavy snowfall. He says it because it's such a common expression woven into every part of everyday life for many Muslims. It means God is great. But it seems as though more and more these days, there are people who want you to think of the phrase as a mantra for something evil, something sinister. They're quick to associate this simple expression with terrorism and the desire to destroy the West. And you know what? I can't deny that terrorists have made this phrase synonymous with acts of horror on innocent people. But the fact that the only association so many people have with this expression is with suicide bombers speaks to a much larger problem. When did we start to scare so easily? Why do we not ask questions of each other, learn from each other? Why don't we assume goodwill in one another? Why do we seek to highlight the worst and sideline the best of each other? These days, if I'm on a plane and I feel a sneeze coming on, I dare not say the phrase Alhamdulillah. It's what you say after you sneeze and a Muslim version of bless you. But a skittish fellow passenger could hear the Arabic words and assume the worst. Xenophobic people often talk about how Muslim children are dangerous because they're sent to madrasas. Well, when I lived in Sudan, I went to a madrasa. Every other kid my age went to a madrasa too. You know why? Because madrasa is just the Arabic word for school. The other, the foreign, the different, would be demystified if we just created space to ask questions, if we sought to understand those who are different than us. Instead, forces that thrive on suspicion of difference seem to leave the longest lasting impression. Distrust and xenophobia, they're related, but it's impossible to say which came first. But you know what? That doesn't matter. What matters is breaking the cycle we're in. If distrust leads to xenophobia, which leads to more distrust, the easiest thing you can do to break the cycle is ask questions. Learn about your neighbors. Question your assumptions. That's the only way out of this toxic atmosphere we find ourselves in. That is the only way back to our better selves. For The National, I'm El Amin Abdul Mahmoud.